안녕하십니까? 니콜라스입니다. And today we are going to learn how to use the powerful Notion formula language to extend our Notion databases with custom functionality. If you don't know what it is, Notion is a powerful project management tool that integrates with your documents, notes, and wikis. Notion is a connected workspace where you create docs, take notes, manage tasks, and organize your life's work all in one place. By combining many different tools, teams can efficiently manage projects with much more speed and clarity. And by using the formulas we are about to see, you can make your Notion databases much more useful and powerful. Many people don't know this, but Notion has a formula system with functions, operators, constants, and properties that uses the syntax of the JavaScript programming language. We can write formulas in our databases to run all kinds of calculations and functions based on other properties. So let's say that we are hosting an event and have a database of guests. This database has two columns, name and last name. If we wanted to have a column that displays the full name, all we have to do is create a new column with the type formula. Then after we click on the edit button, we will see a prompt where we can write our code. To get the value of one column into our formula, we use the prop function with the name of the column we want to select. In our case, we want to get the value of both name and last name and put them together. To put values together, we can use the built-in concat function. This function concatenates or puts together all its arguments and returns their result. So putting it all together, we are going to write concat and inside of it, we are going to use the prop functions to select the name and last name columns. As you can see, the formula works, but we have to add an extra space in between. And we're done. The formula is now created for all the rows in our column. So when we add the next friend to our database, the value will be calculated automatically. Apart from being able to manipulate strings of text, Notion formula functions can do pretty cool stuff with dates. Back in our guests database, we now have a birthday column that has a type of date. Using formulas, I would like to calculate how old my friends are. After creating a new column with the formula type and clicking on the edit button, we can use the date between function. The date between function takes three arguments, two dates, and a unit. For the first date, we are going to use the now function that gives us the current date. For the second date, using the prop function, we will select the birthday column. On the unit argument, we can write years, quarters, months, weeks, days, hours, minutes, seconds, or milliseconds, depending on what unit we want to get the difference on. In our case, we will write years and we are good to go. And just like that, we can get the age of our friends in an automatic way. Because some of our guests are under 18, I would like to have a column that tells me if the guest can drink beer or not. After creating a new column with the formula type and clicking on the edit button, we will use the larger or equal function. This function receives two arguments and it will return true if the first argument is larger than or equal than the second. So we write larger EQ and get the value of the previously calculated age column using the prop function. Then we write 18 as the second value. Now our database tells us who is and who isn't allowed to drink beer at our event. As you can see, our formulas can use values from other columns that are formulas themselves. When we calculate if the guest can drink or not, we are using in the value of the H column, which as you remember, is a value that another formula calculated before. So what do you think? Super useful, right? Let's jump into another database, this time where we are managing a project. This database has three columns, the name of the project, the project due date, and the checkbox that tells us if the project is completed or not. We are now going to make a new formula column to calculate if the project is overdue or not. After creating a new column with the formula type and clicking on the edit button, we are going to use the if function. The if function takes a condition and two values. If the condition is true, the first value will be returned. And if it isn't, the second one will be. For the first value, we are going to check if the current date using the now function is greater than the value of the due date column. If it is, we are going to return the text overdue. And if it isn't, we are going to return the text on track. It works well, but as you can see, the last project on the list comes out as overdue, even though it is finished. To fix this, we're going to write a nested if. First, we will check if the checkbox of the finished column is checked. If it's equals to true, we will return a text that says finished. If the column is not checked, then the second if will run 
1 and here is where we check if the value of now is greater than the due date and return the appropriate text. To practice everything that we have learned so far, on another column let's calculate for how long the project has been overdue or how many days until the due date. Here is the formula. It's kind of big so let's go through it part by part. First we are checking if the project is completed. If it is we return a check emoji. If it isn't we are going to return a string that says for example two days overdue or two days until deadline. We first use the date between function to calculate the difference in days between now and the due date of the project. That will give us a number that might be positive or negative depending on the project being overdue or not. Because we don't want to display negative numbers, we use the apps function. This function is used to get absolute numbers, which means that if we give this function minus one, it will return one. Then we use the format function, which takes the number and turns it into a text that we can use on the concat function that we saw before. And finally, we check if today's date is bigger than the due date of the project. We know the project is overdue and so we attach a days overdue text. Else we write days until deadline. And that's it. Our project database is looking great. As you can see, the only way we can know if the project is completed is by checking the completed checkbox. To finish up, let's improve that part. Instead of having to check a box manually, let's make it automatic. If all the tasks of a project are completed, then the completed box should also automatically be calculated as true. For this, we are going to create another database with the tasks for all our projects. And this database will divide the tasks by their status. Not started, in progress, and done. On our project database, we are going to add a new relationship column to the tasks database. Then we are going to connect each task to their projects. We can then hide the relationship column and we can proceed to create a rollup column. A rollup column allows us to count specific objects on another database. In our case, we want to get a percentage of the tasks that have the status of completed. We then choose if we want to see this count as a number, a progress bar, or a ring. We can now go back to our completed column and turn it into a formula type. We will use the prop function to get the value of the rollup column, which is a value between zero and one, one being 100%. And we will just check if the value is equals to one. If it is, the column will be checked and else it won't. And we are done. Now, when I complete complete tasks on my tasks database, we will see the progress of the project being updated on the project's database. And when all tasks for a specific project are completed, the completed column will be set to true, which will also trigger some changes on the status and the overdue days formula we did before. As you can see, using the power of formulas, you can supercharge your Notion databases to make them even more useful. Managing projects is hard. And even though formulas are very magical there is a limit to what they can do. This is why Notion is sponsoring this video because they want me to tell you about their new product. Notion Projects. Notion Projects is Notion specifically optimized for project management. Instead of using a ton of tools to manage your project, we can use Notion Projects to do all in one place. Notion Projects centralizes all your workflows into one place. Meeting notes, launch plans, issue tracking, sprints, brainstorms, and more. It also has the super useful AI integration that we demonstrated on a video a while ago that can summarize meeting notes, write ideas, to-do lists and more. It also has a Slack, Figma and GitHub integration for issues and pull requests. It's basically Notion on steroids for project managers. Get started with Notion projects for free by clicking the link below. Onjana, kamsa hago, sana hago, daume bayo. See you on the next one. Bye-bye.